Who is this babe lying lowly in a manger? The divine Son of God and the human Son of Man. And to both Mary and Joseph, Gabriel answers our simple, direct question. What child is this? His name is Jesus. This is the anglicized version of the Greek version, Iesu, of the Hebrew, Yeshua or Joshua, which translates very rightly as Yahweh saves or God is salvation. Yahweh being God's covenant revealed personal name to his people. It's a very fitting name for this child, isn't it? For he will save his people from their sins. What child is this? Is He's our Savior. He is our salvation. He doesn't guide us to a way to save ourselves. He is our salvation. He doesn't equip us to be our own saviors. He is our salvation. He is our one and only Savior. He doesn't point us in the right direction or get us over the hump or enlighten our minds. He doesn't just give us sage advice or get us centered. He is not just the Christ consciousness. He's not just a salvation enabler. He is the way and the truth and the life of salvation. He's the mighty warrior who swoops in as we're hopelessly bound and the the blade of our great enemy is just about to off us. This is the Savior who steps in to save us. He comes at that final hour to save us by stepping between us and between our enemy sacrificing himself to rescue us. He saves us. He saves us not from a bad life, not from financial disaster or low self-esteem or unable to reach our potential. He saves us from something cosmically worse, our own unrighteousness. Because you see, we weren't victims bound in ropes or chains, but we are sinners bound in our own sticky evil. We were chained to earth by our wayward flesh. We're hardwired into this rebellion in our DNA and willfully revolting against God in our daily lives. What that looks like is living like he isn't real, like he isn't the everlasting father or the prince of peace or the king of kings pretending that some other fake God is. And bound in sin, our great enemy is about to off us, but that great enemy is not really Satan. It's us. And the punishing blow that's coming for us, the blade that is about to off our life is not a sword or a bullet or a lethal injection or even a cancer. Locked into sin, what is coming for us is nothing less than the wrath of that same mighty God who justly punishes all who have clearly defied him and tried to live their lives without him. And the nightmare before Christmas is that there is nothing in ourselves which you or I could ever do to get out of this absolute mess that we're in. Bound in sin, we're unable to free ourselves. Living in rebellion, we can't broker our own peace treaty. As much as we'd like to be our own deliverers, we are terribly, woefully inadequate at doing that. As much as religions promise you that if you're a good enough boy or girl, you can get off the naughty list, it's just not true. Can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin? Can a leopard take away its spots? Neither can you start doing good, for you have always done evil. So Jeremiah writes in chapter 13. Trying to get out of our own sin is as hopeless as Sisyphus getting that rock to the top of the hill. But that's why Christmas is such good news. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and they shall call his name Emmanuel. At Christmas, God came to be with us in order to save us. While we were still far off from God in every category, he came near us. While we were still in our evil, stuck and bound, the righteous one came to us. When we deserved silence or suffering at the hands of God, instead, he brings us salvation. Jesus, who is perfectly human, can save us from our sins by being our perfect substitute. He can rightfully stand in our place because he is just like us in humanity. He's a brother. This holy child would grow up to be a sinless teenager, which, jokes aside, that might be just as amazing as a virgin birth. And then he walked the earth as the only perfect man who perfectly kept all of God's law. And this Jesus, who is also perfectly divine, can save us from our sins by sacrificing himself in our place. Because he is divine, he can take the full wrath which your sins unquestionably deserved because he can take that on his divine, sinless life. This is what Paul wrote to the Colossians to explain it. For in Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things. That means to bring them back, to put them back together in order to redeem them, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. This is the gospel, guys. The Prince of Peace made peace by the blood of his cross. In his body of flesh, Jesus sanctifies our flesh. And through this, the one called holy, the only one who can be called holy, he saves you to present you, get this, to present you, yes, you, holy and blameless and above reproach before him forever. 